Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today we are going to continue our discussion on using scientific measures. Today, more specifically, we are talking about um, scientific notation, how to write numbers in scientific notation, how to execute at least adding and subtracting operations with scientific notation. And I am going to very briefly discuss them as well as um, give a little bit of an example on how I would work if I am multiplying um, scientific notations. So what is the purpose of scientific notation or what is scientific notation? So let's start off by defining scientific notation, okay? So if we are going to talk about scientific notation, we can say that scientific notation is... Um, uh, are, or rather, let's just kind of quote from the book, I'm sorry. In scientific notation... In scientific notation, numbers are written in the form written in the form m times 10 to the power a second here to the power of n where the factor m is a number greater than or equal to 1 a number greater than or equal to one but less than ten. And n is a whole number. So scientific notation in science, obviously, is used uh, more specifically when we have numbers that are either really large or numbers that are really small. And they're given to us by the formula m times n or times 10. It's always going to be 10 because of, you know, we're working with the zeros and the base 10. So you're always going to see 10 times 10 to the power of n, where n, or the exponent, just represents the number of times that I've moved a decimal place. And I kind of want to, or in class I explained this, I said if m was greater than 1, and this is my take on it, then that means that n is going to be positive, or the exponent is going to be positive. If m was less than 1, that means that the n, or the exponent, is going to be negative. And I know that sounds a little confusing, but let's look at this example. If I gave you the measurement 65,000 kilometers, 65,000 kilometers. Now, 65,000 is not really like a huge number, but it can be uncomfortable to work with, especially if we have significant figures and the precision of the measurement and, you know, all these, all these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to write them in a way that it's easy for scientists to work with, especially if you have to add them or subtract them or multiply them or divide them. They can be a little tricky. So what we're going to do is we're going to write them in scientific notation. Now here, understand that all numbers, all real numbers, have a decimal. 
Sometimes that decimal place could be at the end if you have a whole number like 65,000, or sometimes you'll find a decimal place in a certain area of a number. So writing in scientific notation has to do a lot with moving the decimal places. Usually what I want to do, especially if I have a measurement like 65,000, is I want to move this decimal place until it reaches the first two non-zero digits. Now that can vary uh, if the number is really big or if the number is really small, where the first two non-zero digits are going to be. But in this case, to make it simpler, I want to simply move my decimal place until it reaches the six and the five, or it's until it, it is between the six and the five. And I'm going to do, I'm going to count the number of times I have to move that decimal place. So basically the M would be the non, the, the non-zero digit. And the N would be the number of times that I have to move the decimal place or, or the M I get, I could say would be, you know, uh, the, the measurement, uh, with the amount of significant figures. So to not make this any, or to not continue rambling, this is what I mean. So if the decimal place is here, if I move it from here to here, that's one. If I move it from here to here, that's two. If I move it from here to here, that's three. And I want to make sure that this decimal place is between the six and the five. So how many times did I have to move? I had to move four times. Now, when I'm going, when I'm going, from when I'm moving the decimal place from right to left, that means that the exponent is positive. Um, another way of, of thinking about it is that if the measurement is a number that is greater than one, um, then definitely the exponent is positive. It's a, it's a number that's smaller than one, the exponent is negative. That's what this means. This means that M is greater than one. That means that if the measurement is a number that's greater than one, the n is going to be positive. If the measurement is a number smaller than 1, the n is going to be negative. Again, 65,000 is greater than 1, so obviously that x is going to be positive, and I had to move my decimal place 1, 2, 3, and 4 times. So that means I'm going to write my answer as 6.5, 6 6.5, times 10 to the power of 4 because I move my decimal place 4 times and because 65,000 is greater than 1 or because I went from right to left, however you guys want to... Um, want to want to uh, use it, but basically 6.5 times 10 to the power of 4. Now what if I... Had, uh, another number. Now, this one's not in your book. This is just another example that I'm going to use. Let's say this one, let's say I have a number like 123,000. Okay, so let's say I had a number like 123,000. So if I have 123,000, and I want to turn that or I want to express that in scientific notation. One hundred twenty-three thousand. I don't know meters. Now I want. I know that after the last zero, there's a decimal point, as there always has been. And what I am going to do is I'm going to move this decimal place until I reach the first two non-zero digits. Now. The first two non-zero digits, what I mean is until I reach the, until this decimal place is between the one and the two, okay? So it's not the first non-zero digits. In this case, I would say the last two non-zero digits because there's a three here. So I'm going to move my decimal point until it, it is between the one and the two. And we're going to say one, two, three four, but it's not between the two and the three that I want it. I want it between the one and two and five. So I had to move that five times, which means that I would write my answer. And I have to include the three because the three is significant. 1.23 times 10. Oh, I missed the three. Give me one second. 1.23 
times 10 to the power of five because I moved that that's one point five times. And of course we include the meters. Okay. Now what if I had a really small number? Like the one in your book is actually the the I think it's the length of a flu virus, which is zero point zero And this is going to be 12 millimeters. So this is the length, I believe, in your book of a flu virus. So we have to write this. So now we have the opposite. We have a really small, we have a really small um, measurement. And I'm going to move this decimal point until I reach the one and the two. And because 0.0... .0 zero one two is smaller than one um is smaller than one then that means the exponent is going to be negative now there's another uh trick to this that i showed some of you guys in class and we'll see if we can uh do it in a minute with another number so i'm gonna move i say one mm -hmm. two three and until it reaches until it's between the one and the two that would be four so we say that our answer is 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative four millimeters negative because if i look at 0 0.0012 uh, 0 or 12 it's actually smaller than 1, which means the exponent is negative. Now, another way of working with these kind of numbers is, let, let's say I have uh, 0 0.00, one more, 563. Six, three. Now, there's two ways of doing this. Let me show you the one, uh, and we'll say centimeters. Now, let's use the one that we did in the previous example, okay, which is where I basically count the decimal places until I reach, in this case, the 5 and the 6. I know that there's a 3, but I don't really care about the 3. I care about the 5. So, usually... Uh, or I want to move this small point between the five and the six. Usually, when we're going, when we're working with really small numbers, and we're going from left to right, you want to make sure that that decimal point is between the first two non-zero digits. And if we're going with a larger number, where we're going from right to left, we want to make sure that the decimal point is between the last two significant digits. Like in the case of one hundred twenty-three thousand, the last two significant digits would be the one and the two. So I want to make sure my decimal point is between the one and the two. In the case of zero point zero 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 five six three centimeters, it's going to be since I'm working with a small number, it's going to be between the five and the six. So let's just do that. Let's just. Um, move our decimal place and then write our answer in scientific notation and then hopefully I will get the opportunity to um, show you guys the trick that I use specifically and it only works with small measurements but anyway so from here to here that's one from here to here that's two this is three and this is four so I would say 5.63 because I have to include the 3, because technically the 3 is significant. So 5.63 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Centimeters. Now, another way of doing this is counting the zeros to the left. So if I look at the same problem, 0, 0.0, you know what? Let me write it down. Another way of just is just counting the zeros. 0, 0.00. 0, 0. And uh, I don't know, 0. 
0.275 meters. Another way is just counting the zeros that I have to the left and including the significant figures or the significant digits in my answer. So if I have, I have how many zeros do I have before I get to the two? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five zeros. So I can say two point, and I have to include the seven and the five because they're significant, seven, five. times 10 to the power of negative 5. And all I did was I counted the zeros that were to the left of the 2. Now, if some of you um, don't like that approach, you can use the one that we did for the previous problem. So, I, again, I can just count the decimal places, and this would be 1. Two, three, four, and five. And notice that either way you would get the same answer. Either if I count the zeros that are to the left of the two in this case, or either if I decide to just do the method where I move the decimal point, notice that the exponent doesn't change. It's still 10 to the power of negative 5 in that case. Okay. Now what we're going to see is what we do when we have to execute operations with them. Um, adding or subtracting or multiplying and dividing. And this one is in your book. So I'm just going to do the one in your book where we're adding and subtracting. And then we'll real quick, I'll go over the one for multiplication. Now one thing that is important when adding or subtracting significant digit, uh, excuse me, when adding or subtracting scientific notation, the exponents must be the same. So, and adding or subtracting scientific notation, or I'm sorry. Subtracting numbers written in scientific notation, scientific notation, the exponents must be the same or equal. And let me illustrate that with the example that is on page 49 of your textbook. If I have, if I have 4.2 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms, if I have 4.2 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms. Basically, what I would do, or the number that I'm going to add it to has to have the same, um, the exponent has to also be to the power of 4. But if I have, like the way it's in your book, 7.9, times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms, that presents an, an uh, well, not really a problem, but it just means I have to uh, do an, uh, you know, I need an extra step or I have to do an extra step. So you can't just say in adding or subtraction, of course, in the minute when we see multiplication and in multiplication or division, this really doesn't make much of a difference, but in adding or subtracting, it does pose a bit of a challenge because I need to make sure that those exponents are the same. So there's two ways I can do this. Either I move the decimal place of the 7.9 to the left and turn it into 0 0.79, and that way the, the 10 to the power of 3 turns into 10 to the power of 4, or 
I can move the decimal place of the 4.2 to the right and turn this into 10 to the power of 3. Either way is correct, and you'll get the same answer regardless. I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this decimal place right here. I'm going to move the decimal place between the, zero, the 7 and the 9. I'm going to move it one space to the left. And I'm going to turn that into 4.2 times 10 to the power of 4. Ten to the power of four plus zero point seven nine seven nine times ten to the power of four. Because since, or since I move the decimal point to the left in this case, that means that I added an extra place value which or an extra zero, which means that this is 10 to the power of 4. Now, I can add a zero here next to the 2 uh, just as a place holder so that I can add everything correctly. And 0 plus 9 is 9. And 2 plus 7 is also 9. And 4 plus 0 is 4, so this would be 4.99 times 10 to the power of 4. Um, kilograms. Okay, so that stays there. And then, of course, I can just round this off to 5, okay, because 4.99 is basically 5, and I can just say 5 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms. So 5, you can say 5 or 5.0. Remember that in this case, the 0 is just a placeholder, but you can say 5.0 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms. And that's one way of doing it. I'm going to show you the second way in just a minute. Just want to make sure that I write everything correctly. Okay, so kilograms. So that's one way. I just changed or moved the decimal point of the 7 of the 7.9 to the left. And then um, that automatically turned everything. Or I added then that um, what I did is that. As I move it to the left, technically I'm adding a zero to the left, which means that now I can um, have my exponents the same. Now, the other method is if I would have decided, instead of changing the 7.9, to change the 4.2. So the rule says that if the exponent, if I'm adding scientific numbers in scientific or subtracting, of course, numbers in scientific notation, and the exponents are different, I can either change one or the other. So in this case, that means I could either change the 7.9 and have, um, give it an exponent of 4, or I can change the 4.2. So now I did the 7.9. Now let's do the 4.2. If I do the 4.2, that means that I'm going to move this decimal to the left and turn it into 4.20, and then that would take away, or that would mean that I, um, if I add that extra zero to the right, I lose, or the exponent becomes smaller. So then this would be 4.20, sorry, or not 4.20, excuse me, 42, 42, 42. I made a mistake, 42, not 4.20, 42. So if I move the decimal place to the right, that means that I turn the 4.2 into a 42. So that means that I the exponent becomes smaller because the number became larger. Because 4.42 is larger than 40, uh, the 4.2. So that means that the exponent just became smaller. As the number increases, the exponent decreases. And that's good to understand. As the number increases 4.2 i turn it into 42 the exponent decreases so that means that this is now 42 times 10 to the power of 3. in the previous example the other thing the opposite is also true and what that means is that 
as 7.9 in the previous uh, part, I just moved the zero here to the left. So, um, and I'm making this number smaller. So basically, as the number uh, decreases, as the number decreases, like I did in the other example, the exponent increases. So if I turn 7.9 into 0 0.79, the exponent increases. Um, if I'm doing what I'm doing now, which is I'm turning 4.2 into 42, I'm turning 4.2 into 42, then here it's the opposite. The exponent decreases. So that's why this is now 42 times 10 to the power of 3 or 42.0 times 10 to the power of 3. And 7.9 basically stays the same. So plus, plus 7.9 times 10 to the power of 3 and, and that would be 49.9 49.9 times 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 3. Now, a, what I want to do is um, I'm going to basically change the exponent, um, move the decimal point so that I can get the same answer that I got in the previous example because um, in reality, it, it was never okay. So let me let me explain this again. The original problem was not forty-two uh, kilograms. The original problem was four point two kilograms, which means that I need to have my answer equaling the same amount of significant digits as my problem. So if I notice, I have two significant digits in forty-two, and I have two significant digits in seven point nine. So my answer cannot have three significant digits, my answer has to have two significant digits. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I am going to move the decimal point between the four and the nine. And remember, turn the 49.9 into 4.99. So if I make the, if I go from a larger number to a smaller number, that means that the exponent increases. So that would be 40 or 4.99. times 10 to the power of 4 10 to the power of 4 which just like in our previous example is rounded to 5.0 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms it's very important that remember even though their scientific notation I have to uh, abide by the rules of significant figures, which means that in adding or subtracting, the answer has to have the same amount of significant figures as the number with the least amount of significant figures. In this case, it really didn't matter because both 42 and 7.9 have two significant figures. So let's let's again see what I did here real quick. Um, I changed the x. I changed the 42, the 4.2 into 42. Okay, so I move my decimal place one time to the right and turn that into 42. Remember that whenever I increase, that means that whenever I'm going from a smaller number to a larger number, the exponent decreases, which means that since I'm turning 40.2 into 42, and the decimal, the exponent decreases, and instead of being to the power of 4, it would be to the power of 3. And then I add that to 7.9, and that gives me 49.9 .9 times 10 to the power of 3. But I need to make sure that my significant figures are the same. So I have two significant figures here and two significant figures here. My answer is supposed to have the same amount of significant figures as the number with the least amount of significant figures. In this case, it doesn't really make a difference because both of them have two. So what I need to do is in order to make 
this or to have this as having two significant figures, it means that I have to move this decimal point right here one time to the um, left, making 49.9, 4.99, hence turning the, um, the exponent of 3 back into an exponent of 4. Because remember, when I go from a larger number to a smaller number, the exponent increases. So that turns into 4.99 times 10 to the power of 4. However, that is still only, that still has three significant figures, and I need to have two. So what I do is I round um, to 5 and write it as 5.0 times 10 to the power of 4 kilograms. Now let's see what I would do if I had to multiply or um, significant figures, okay? So let me erase this, and let's go to page 50, and let's go to um, the example, but we're only going to do multiplication in this video, and then in the next video, we'll do division, okay? So let me just kind of erase all this. Actually, it's just easier if I do this, because it doesn't really have to do with anything. So let's go to page 50. And on page 50, um, give me one second, ladies and gentlemen, while I retrieve the pages. On page 50 of your textbook, you are working with multiplication. And what you're multiplying is 5.23 times 10 to the power of 6. 5.23 times 10 to the power of 6 micrometers. This is the Greek letter mu. Micrometers times 7.1 times 10 to the negative 2 micrometers. Times 10 to the negative 2 micrometers. Now, if you notice, you can obviously tell that the exponents are different. So, so, the exponents are different. So, what we would do in this case, as you would be asking yourself, well, does that mean that um, I have to make the exponents the same or whatnot? No. In multiplication or division, it really doesn't matter if the exponents are different. What you're going to do is you're going to multiply the 5.23 and the 7.1. And whenever you're multiplying exponents, you're going to add the exponents or add them algebraically. So what I'm going to do, and of course, we have to follow the rules of significant figures. So we're going to multiply. We're going to do it separately. We're going to multiply 5.23... times 7.1 first. You can, you can do it manually or you can use a calculator um, to get the answer. Okay, so if you multiply 5.23 times 7.1, that's going to give you 37.133. So I know that's going to be 37 point 133. And now, and of, I have to, of course, you know, add the exponents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 6 plus negative 2. Because the base is the same. Remember, if I have exponent with the same base, if I'm multiplying exponents with the same base, I can add the exponent. And the base is 10. So... Technically, 
Let me, let me illustrate it better this way. Technically, what I'm doing here is since the base is the times 10, I'm passing over the times 10. So I'm moving on the times 10, and I'm adding the exponents. I'm adding the 6 to the negative 2. So I'm going to say 6 plus... negative 2. And 6 plus negative 2 is positive 4, so this would be 37.133 times 10 to the power of 4. And you remember that you're multiplying micrometers times micrometers, so this would be micrometers squared, which is why in your book you see micrometers squared, because you're multiplying both units as well. And micrometers times micrometers is micrometers squared. Now, technically, this answer is correct, except for one small detail. That whenever I am multiplying or dividing numbers that have significant figures, I have to make sure, or excuse me, whenever I'm multiplying numbers or measurements, scientific measurements, I have to take into account the rules of significant figures. And the rules of significant figures state that whenever I'm multiplying or dividing numbers, um, I have to have the same amount of significant figures as the number with the smallest amount of significant figures. In other words, 5.23 has three significant figures 7.1 has two significant figures, which means that my answer has to have two significant figures as well. So in order, and of course, I have to apply the um, rule of significant figures. So what that means is I look at 37.133 and I have five significant figures, but all I need is two, which means that I have to move my decimal place one time to make sure that I have two significant digits. And I have to use the rules of rounding. So I move the decimal point between the three and the seven. Next to the seven, there's a one. So that means that I, I round down and I would say 3.7. And remember what I said in the previous example. If I am going from a large number to a small number, that means that the exponent is going to increase. Since I moved it one time to the right, that means that the times 10 to the power of 4 is now going to turn into times 10 to the power of 5. So this would be 3.7 times 10 to the power of 5 micrometers squared. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of this video lesson. The exercises that you were going to do were on the formative assessment on page 55, problems 2 through 5a. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Stay safe, and we'll see each other in our next class. So have yourselves an awesome rest of your day. Bye.